divorced when he was younger. I was divorced when I was 50 years old. I had nowhere to live. I was homeless. Raising a teenager, it wasn't good. The teenager girl, my daughter, went off the rail, just like any other young people that are going through problems. So what we did with my daughter was, I started treating her as my own friend. She changed. And we thought of the pain that I went through, my daughter's pain, Putting together, we opened an organization called Afrios Care. So Afrios Care, we help young people at risk with their families. The young people at risk and also with their families. To this point, we have got a basketball club called the Black Rhinos. Maybe you heard uh, Honorable Bruce Atkinson talking about the Black Rhinos. It was founded by myself and a young Sudanese boy who went through a lot of problems too. So all what I can say is, young people, they can do, pro they can have problems, but we need to support them. So that's a little bit about myself. Thank you. My name is Tahir. I just came to Australia in 2004. And uh, I'm single mother with three kids. And life was uh, not easy for me to be here in front of you today. It's a lot of journey and a lot of hardship for me, as everybody in this group, all the women, they mentioned how it is hard living a single parent. So um, I'm here, I just, I don't feel like uh, that hardship is making me strong woman. And I uh, just uh, push myself to face all the um, hardship that I'm going to face, but to bring my kids uh, you know, on the right track and help them. Which is uh, a lot of help with African community or Australian wider community. And I'm, I just uh, uh, think about the women and I say, okay, after, as African women, we have to be stronger, we have to be, have a voice and to help. And I just think the women association that women it is today I'm proud of that group they just uh, practicing them um, all the right in Australia which financially or politi politically or whatever they have to do that's really uh, good and I'm proud of myself to have that women's group and actually uh, women is very uh, we are born a strong human nature Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Natalie Bala, and uh, I come from Cameroon, like Dr. Mimi. Just <laughs> one of the greatest things is that we are we are all Africans. We are all bilingual. We are all multilingual, even. And I want to say thank you to Dr. Mimi. She worked hard. And she, when she decided to put this summit on, I was pushing to it again. Oh God, Mimi, why are you looking again for a job? And then she said, Natalie, you are always going to be in the three or whatever. Then we decided we need to create what we, what our association, African sister, would incorporate. We are already incorporated before the Victoria Machu Cultural. And we decided to create it and not only to be together, not for celebration, but also a pathway, a platform where we can discuss about issues that we are facing out work, new arrival, isolation, how to speak about domestic violence in Australia, which is fighting in Africa and more discreet in Africa. It's not allowed to speak about it, but yeah, we, in Australia we can speak about it. We have the, the support and where we can find the support. That's, and the other thing is that we want to help new arrival women who are well-educated how to um, 
uh, how do you call it? If they don't know how to do the kovalita, if they don't know how to apply for a job here, how to seek for a job, how to apply, how to prepare the interview, how to, how to, how to. As my sister just said, we are women, we are strong, but we don't realize that we are strong. Because going through the pain of giving birth, no men will do it. Yes. <laughs> yes. And raising kids is not an easy job. You can see, they leave them even for one hour in Fecha, they will call you back like a few minutes later. We can go through this. Then we are strong and we can do it. What I can say, in with my African sister, what we say, we have a uh, what you call it, we can do it. We are like Obama kids, we can do it. <laughs> we can do it. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Rebecca. Of course, you have to bear with me. I have to use a cheat sheet at some point because I've just been overtaken. Um, I like the quote by Michelle Eckers who says, I guess the challenge for every one of us is to take difficult and painful times and turn them into something beneficial, something that will make you grow. Now, whatever I'll briefly say about what I do in my workplace as a leader, as well as a little bit in the community, take away this message. Supporting the girl child because you can't become a woman unless you've gone through that girl child period. So my work in the community is really to create a forum for that girl child to grow into a powerful, capable woman. And I believe that is part of what the, for, uh, the summit is about today and tomorrow. So quickly, the messages are, make sure that all resources are learner oriented. It's about the girl child, the woman himself as she's growing up young into that adult. And then giving that ongoing support. Then empowering that girl who turn into a woman into somebody who can be assertive, independent, and speak for her own family if she has been blessed by a family, speak assertively within the community, in the workplace, and if there's that opportunity, globally, internationally. Now, there are, I'll just say, I had about seven harsh truths, truths about a woman in leadership, whether in the workplace or, uh, or community. One of them is, and this is part of my personal story, it's hard. It's hard. I've been in Australia for 14 years. It's hard. If you are to be in that leadership role, and I am, I am the coordinator or domain leader for EAO uh, domain in my workplace. I teach at a high school. You have to work double as much, if not three times as much as normal. And no <laughs> That's a harsh truth. And then a, another harsh truth is, don't think like education is the only way to leadership as yeah. a woman. Yeah. You can be a leader as a woman without education. There are. Another harsh truth is, without support, we can't get anywhere. Amen. I have Dr. Dr. Mimi here. She calls me auntie. And she calls my husband, Uncle Charles, Dr. Charles. Uncle Dr. Charles, Auntie Rebecca, Auntie Rebecca, you need support. And she's one of she and her family. They are support. My own family. I wish my husband was here. I believe Dr. Mim will give me another chance tomorrow because I thought I would speak tomorrow. And that's when my family would be here. I'll speak more about my paper tomorrow. But today, just encouraging you as women in the community to be leaders, know that you need 
need support. It can be your family. If, there's, uh, if the family cannot come along with you, there's the community. You have friends with your neighbors. They'll be there. Another harsh truth is, do not hang around with negative people. <laughs> Now, just to finish off, about three or three things, uh, four things that inspired me to go into the community work as a leader, but again to fight hard to do further studies. We came on, my family came on a, a student visa. There were only two weeks left when a whole packet of my application for skilled migration was dropped at my doorstep, Hampton Park, to say, no, you can't stay here. Two weeks, within two weeks, my only son, I've got five children, four girls, one boy, he was to sit for his VC. What would you do? Would you say, I give up and go back to Malawi? You disturb, you interrupt the education of your children. I had to brave it out. My fellow women and the girl child, young girls, it's not easy. You have to make a decision. Will you stand with your family or not? Support them. I had to make a decision. Talk to my husband. What should we do? It came like a thought. Talk to your assistant. Uh, talk to your principal. And that was the previous principal. John, this is my situation. Should I go or the school is ready to support or sponsor my family? He quickly went to the school council and the school council, not him alone, he told me I'm willing to sponsor you, but it's not about me. The school council, which is the community, has to decide. Do you know my sisters and brothers, the school council that evening decided that Rebecca and her family should be sponsored. That's why I'm here. I'm thankful. <laughs> However, it hasn't been easy. As I, I was employed eventually, and then change of uh, principalship, imagine being told after, being, after serving for five years in leadership, you are told you don't have leadership skills. It broke my heart. I shared with one of my colleagues, this is what I've been told, and I've been removed from the leadership position in my workplace, what should I do? And I was told, Rebecca, maybe you have to work among your own people. That is what drove me into the community working. And today I'm here talking to you. What can I say? What an inspiring um, story there from uh, my sister Rebecca here. It's just one of those times where you know you become emotional, and I think it's okay to be emotional in these situations because I think you're in a very safe space. So I'm very privileged to know you, but also to know that you can share those very personal moments because this is one thing about us. We keep these things in us and we don't share them. And I think as leaders, we should stop thinking that we have to be strong all the time because even strong women like Rebecca, they have to be emotional sometimes. And I think this is just an example to show us that we are humans, all of us in this room. So I really want to say thank you for sharing that. But also for all the women with those personal stories and inspiring stories that you've shared. Um, I know we don't have a lot of time because the session started late and we're running late. So it's 14.25, which uh, that we're supposed to stop at 14.25, but we barely start, started. So I will just say in another 15 minutes, we have to have another 15 minutes. And in those 15 you minutes... You have to 3 o'clock. I've got you at 3 o'clock? Yes. Oh, you see, she, the daughter, she directs me. <laughs> <laughs> example, the two daughters there. So, and this, so I just go with what I'm told. So thank you very much. And this is what it's all about, initiative. Let them take the decisions because they've worked it out yeah. and they know that it is okay. So yes, I believe you people and we're going to go to three o'clock. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> so coming back to the, uh, to the panelists, um, just 
your own um, uh, styles of leadership. I know you've all introduced yourself. Just in two minutes, can each of you share with, with us um, that when you lead, and I'm glad that uh, my sister, sister Rebecca has got her stopwatch on. <laughs> Just two minutes, please. Tell me about, share with us your leadership style, because this is about leadership, because all of you are already women leaders in the community. Share with us how you do it in order for it to be successful. Yes, please. As I said before, I work with young people. So leadership, leading young people, you have to be at the same level with them. If you try to impose things on the young people, sometimes they cannot listen to you. What I have, what I have seen, like with my own daughter, is that when I started taking, treating her as my friend, whatever we decided, we were deciding, and then we could agree. But what I see with um, a lot of older African people, because of our strict African values, we, take, we tend to impose things on the young people. My way of thinking is, work with these young people and you will be successful. Because they will tell you that I've got rights. And if you compete with them, they will take those rights and they don't have responsibilities, they start doing negative things. Who loses? It's the parents who lose. So all what I can say in leadership, the way I work with the young people, we have got about 70 young people, the black rhinos, it's working with them as a leader. And you see that you will succeed. That's it. As a, as a leader, I would say that with my women, what we do, we have to discuss, a uh, point discussion, and listen to each other, and values the point of view of each other, and find a consensus where we can take the decision together and move on or build up what we are deciding to do together. And for me, it's a point of discussion and listen to other. There's no better person in the room you are not because you are not because you are the leader you have to tell to people what to do, no? The leader listen more mm -hmm. and speak later. That's what that's my politic is to listen to my people and take the decision together. Thank you. Like as a group or as a community, we need to be together and uh, 
work hard and just educate. In my case, I start off by having a vision that has worked for me, and I have shared that vision with, uh, especially I work with um, the Africa Day of Australia, okay? and uh, with the Families and Youth Forums, and then Advancing Australia, Afri uh, African Australia Agenda. When we plan, I make sure that I've got a vision, I share that one, I get the feedback from people, so I involve everyone, and I make sure that everyone should see themselves in that vision, so they should share it too. They look at the outcomes and they contribute to the outcomes too. Then another principle that I use is uh, being inspirational. You, I find a way of influencing others I work with within the community and that has helped too because in such a case it's like sometimes instead of me initiating an idea I may just maybe say something and then just leave it to the members uh, within that committee. Let them just come up with a lot of ideas and then I take them through. And yet I know that well, I just have to monitor, supervise that everything falls in line. And I know that uh, somebody else said that if you want to be an effective leader, you need to be inspirational, be influential. And the leader is not a leader unless they have followers and followers it can even be one person that's enough it's not easy to win a song it's difficult one person is a follower you're a leader they'll follow you okay so don't give up then another principle that i use as a leader is uh, uh, testing the pattern and uh, the pa uh, partners so look at okay you want to be part of me we work together then find a way of testing their commitment and then we can indeed go along. So look at, okay, what do you want, what do you have that you give me? I have this, okay? So it's not just looking at what you have seen me do, but what are you offering our team also? Because we need to work, it's like, yeah, 50-50 or 100% each, uh, towards each other. So I'll just share those three things. <laughs> why we're here because it's about leadership, the different styles and uh, what true leadership is all about. And I think that inclusivity, you have to be inclusive and you cannot lead when you cannot follow. You know, so you have to be a good follower yourself. And coming back to this theme of leadership in the community, could I therefore, um, except one of you has something really burning, but I think we want to open the questions now to the floor because I've been very mindful of the time and then you can share your ideas and if you can answer questions in just one minute, not more than one and a half minute, so that we can give the opportunity to many people. I think that <coughs> yeah, please, my question, um, I, sorry, I didn't pick your name, but I think it's so Rebecca. Yeah, I don't know if anyone has been tweeting what I have. Mm -hmm. And I want to tweet about the seven hashtags, and you only mentioned four, can you finish that please? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Will I not correct them? Oh, seven. Yes. I mentioned about mentioned working two, time, uh, two times harder or three times harder. Did I say that uh, everyone would agree that these numbers of women, the number of women in these leading positions is very low. So we are underrepresented in the leadership. Uh, roles. So that's a harsh truth, but it's happening. It's just because maybe all the norm. And then uh, about the support, I mentioned that one. Another harsh truth is there are too many barriers, so you need to find a way of overriding. You have to override. You can play a victim or be a setting and so forth. Then another harsh truth is, hold back, uh, we are held back by tradition. Whether we are in this context or back home. So it's not exceptional that because you're here, now, 
Anywhere you'll be, we are held back by tradition. That's a harsh truth. A sixth one, though desirable, education itself. I mentioned about education, so that's fine. The last one is, we may even fail once in a while. Historically, men in leadership, it's a record, they have also failed. So when you fail as a leader, okay, a woman as a leader, don't feel like, oh, this is my ending now. You can fail. You will fail at some time. But if you're a leader, you will rise. You stand up and go on. Yeah, so you move on. So that's a harsh truth. So you won't be successful every time. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies. Hope you're well. Um, very inspiring story and um, showing a very strong resilience. Um, something that I would like to ask is about resilience and the leadership as well from all of you. Um, at some point, I will come across as a parent and what I would ask is about uh, raising a child. Um, how would you build a resilience on the children and how can your leadership will be benefit your children later on? If you are privileged, for example. Anyone can answer that. <laughs> um, I think uh, as a parent, always you are a role model for your children. You are a teacher of your child. Whatever you are doing, the children, they can pick up. They can see you in your daily life. So uh, that's why always parents, if they are, sometimes it's not true, sometimes yes, but the most of, the, most of uh, successful parents, the kids also, they are following. I think, so we have to be role model and we have to be, uh, uh, do right thing in front of kids, especially for our children, we have to be. Like, like the camera on you, children is like camera, they just speaking whatever you do. So, Allow me to start just for a second. I'm a teacher, so sitting down sometimes is a, is a problem. However, there's a purpose for me standing up. I want to build on my sister's point of being a role model. Okay, people say I'm a role model to my girls, I've got four daughters, as I said. One of them, I, somehow, I didn't know, but when she heard that I was going for the African Leadership Development Program in 2000, uh, uh, 2013, she came along with me. And I didn't realize that was the beginning. Later on, I realized that she looked up to me. Okay? It was a what? A silent admirer? Yes. Eventually, she broke through. And when I realized that, okay, my children are observing me, what I've done is, I'm a teacher and she has supported me. I'm a teacher and as I work with uh, Africa the Australia organization, she supports me in that area. She is a fashion designer. That's why I stood up. This is one of, the, of her designs. I support her in that area. So, Yes, there will be difficulties. It wasn't easy for her to reach that stage of looking up to mom and dad too. Only that it's hard for her to follow her dad's path. But she respects him. But it's easy to work with mom. So I think there's a way where you can see, identify similar interests and come on to each other as you go along. And I think that's true with my sister. Oh, my yeah, twin sister. sister. We are yeah. both <laughs> come from Malawi. <laughs> uh, just adding on to uh, what Rebecca has said, I also have one daughter that went through a lot. Family violence, divorce, homeless. But I told my daughter, I told her that we need to be friends, now we are friends. With the children, please, if there are, we are parents here, you need to work with your children, as I've said before. Most of, uh, uh, most of the parents, we are good at imposing, like, I want you to become a doctor, I want you to become a nurse, I want you to become this. 
you are driving your children mental. Work with them. Find their talent to support them. My daughter dropped out from school for 10 years because we were pressurizing her to be a nurse because I'm a mental health clinician. My ex-husband then, you need to be an architect. He said, no, I can't do this. So she went along deep nursing. She made sure she felt and dropped out from school for 10 years. <coughs> After 10 years, I said, what else do you want to do? Mama, I want to become a fashion designer. I said, on my foot. <laughs> I'm telling you, so who is going to employ you as a fashion designer? As an African, you need to be a nurse, you need to be a lawyer. I said, Mom, I cannot do it. So we bought her sewing machines. The girl started learning through YouTube. Her name is Kwacha. Her label is Kwacha. She was meant to be one of the speakers in the morning, but she's at, at school doing the fashion thing. So she went on YouTube, started collecting information. She made her own portfolio, went to school to study a certificate. The teacher said, no, it's a diploma. She gets distinction, high distinction. As I speak, there is a young man called Ranz Bozi. He runs an international fashion organization. She has actually taken this girl to work along with him. And in here, if you know anyone who is a fashion designer, African, boy or a girl, please talk to me. I will make a name for your child. Oh. What I would like to say is, our African children, they are lacking opportunities. Please provide a platform, support them, go to government ministers. You heard Honorable Bruce Atkinson saying I'm his friend. I was honored. Go to the people who matter and help these young people to find opportunities <coughs> and support those opportunities. The Black Rhinos, we started with five, but now we are 70. Because opportunities, a lot of governments, are, are, are organizations are coming in. So I support my uh, sister, my twin, Rebecca. We need to support our children. Thank you. <laughs> it's, on, it's only to complete, sorry. Oh, it's only to complete what those, my sisters just said. But for me, I think my way of educating my kids is to be open with them. Talking to them, explaining the truth. Say the name by the name. Then head is head, ears is ears. And when you are struggling, don't hide it. Tell them that you are struggling. They, will, they are more aware, they will understand, they will help you. They will help you to struggle about it. And she just, just told me her sister, daughter, Chen, hey, my son, he's there. He's doing photography, video, whatever, whatever internet. But you can't imagine that my son was finished his study as engineer in aerospace. In 2014, he was only 22 years. But he decided that he's done one work in engineering firm. And he's doing photography. And I said to him, you enjoy it? Yes, okay, go for it. <laughs> Correct. Then sometimes parents need to be open because the problem with us is that sometimes we need to hide the truth in front of our kids. And then they don't understand it. They don't know why you say to him, I can't give that to you. But tell him, I don't have it. And this is the truth. And you show the proof. And your kids will be really willing to listen to us. They are not stupid. They are really, really open minded. But they need us to trust them and give them the opportunity to listen to us. Then that's the only thing I can say. And everybody already said the remaining. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I know all five of you beautiful women are mothers and you have faced many hardships in your journey. And I just wanted to know if you've uh, held any of the pain they put through away from your kids and why did you do that? Just to, I missed to that. If what? If you held any of the pain that you went through and any of the hurt away from your kids. I will answer that. I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did not hide the pain. I know sometimes parents say I'm strong, I don't want my kids to go through this. If you do that, they will know, they observe, and then they will not trust you. Be open. Dad has got a relationship, or dad is going away, or I've lost a job. Be open. 
If you are a Muslim or a Christian, you are told not to lie. So don't lie to your children, otherwise they will start lying to you as well. So if you have someone or maybe a significant other who lies to you, beg them, tell them, I know, tell me the truth. That's, have I answered your question? Uh, let me just add on to that quickly. I support what my twin has said. There are times, however, I've looked at a situation where I have made a deliberate decision to hide my pen. And as I'm sitting here, I am hiding my pen that I have for my youngest daughter. And she, she has the right to go through what she's going through. She's 25, she wished she was married and so on, maybe a year ago and so forth. But for whatever reason, we're still waiting, waiting. And you know how frustrating it can be for the African girl child raised up here with parents' expectations, with their own expectations, where to find, when to find a girl. It can or it has brought her down to some depression which has affected her relationship with me as a mom, you know, mothers would love to be assisted at home. You are tired from where you go, what, community work. And you see she's going through her own pain and you, you sense it. And it pains you also. I've hidden that and she doesn't know that I'm going through that pain. It's for her. And that's a condition. So there are times when a parent and decide to hide. Thank you. Well, thanks for that. And I think it is really why sometimes that you have to think about the reason why or the type of pain that you're going through or the child because you really don't want to cause more harm than good. Always think about the intention. But um, coming back, so it is, I think it's really important making that decision based on the circumstances. But I wanted to add something in terms of what you people said before in relation to opportunities and, you know, it's not just education. Because I know generally in the African families there are four types of professions. Can you name them? Aspirations, but we need to be realistic. But I understand the parents' mentality then because those were the jobs that gave your their children security always. In Australia, there are different opportunities. Kids will live on other, you know, people will be successful in other areas. There are lots of hidden professions, but you know, I think let's try to encourage our children to follow their passion. So I just wanted to raise that because sometimes as teachers in this room, as professionals in this room, you may see that lots of the children come in, they have this pressure, and that's just because the expectations at home can really, really be hard. So, you know, I said to my children, if you do whatever, just be better than me, I'm happy with you. It's hard, but that is the hard reality, because people turn around and say, oh, but your mom is a doctor, and so is your father, so you should be a doctor. You should be, oh yeah, you know what I mean? So there's a pressure, and it's hard for those children. We have to be realistic. It is hard, there's a lot of pressure on them. So it's more like, okay, we support you to do the best thing. I, I, I think I have, my husband has helped me a lot in actually supporting the children in that space more than me, because it has helped me myself, because yes, I was a bit rigid in that mentality, not anymore. And also being a young mother, Everybody knows Sherry Rose, right? She says, Mommy, you can't argue with me because she will win. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so for me, that is the hard reality. But I think we support the children. I think they're very, very intelligent. And all is about giving them space and giving them that trust. We had a very important question with the sister right yeah. there on that end. One of my sisters. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Yasa from Boron SME Church. I'm from Nigeria. Um, I want to appreciate Dr. Mimi for organizing this seminar and also appreciate my 
that you think is important on leadership. So 30 seconds, this is your chance. But before you do that, I've just noticed the Honorable uh, uh, Georgie Crozier has walked into the room, Shadow Minister for Women, and we just want to welcome you as well. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, as we can say before, uh, there is a lot of help for young kids. Education is key for all, whatever issue you have, education is very important. So to help your daughter, there is a lot of uh, agency or there is a lot of activity for kids, especially after school or, uh, so you just, you can talk to uh, wherever, wherever you live, I'm sure there is a lot of organization. And you need to just take her to connect with the, uh, uh, service providers, and then they can help a lot. My daughter was just as naughty as your son, but she is here in Australia. All what I can say is treat your daughter as your friend. Yep. Take her to the same level. If she needs you, provide time for her. Don't say I'm a businesswoman, or I'm going to order this, or I don't have time for you, or no. Be with your daughter. You go to church, give the pastor full time. What we have lost here, I think, as the African, sometimes when the kids say, I don't want to go to church, we say, well, I can't do it. Make it a point. Night, when going to bed, pray. Waking up, pray with them. Go to hear your prayers. Again, check the way you talk when a, a young one has done something wrong. You frown. I hate you. Smacking, the pain will go. But the frown and venom from your mouth the psychologically will damage your child. I need to speak with you later. I'll give you my card. We can yes. talk over the phone. That's my point. Thank you. Okay. What I will say to that lady is that I'm a mother of teenagers too. Okay? Then the only my only my only advice I say, be as she says, be a friend of your daughter. Talk to her and explain to her and have time to you. Your family first. Money comes. Yes. But family first. That's my that's my own vision. Family first, my kids first. The remaining comes after. Thank you. One, third time, be a friend to your daughter. That's an answer. My son, good, not naughty, left my home. But we remained a friend to him. He came back. We thought of sending our last born daughter back home. We were cautioned by a Christian friend, said, Africa or Australia? Your daughter will still be what she is to be. Yeah. Be a friend to your daughter. My last words to my uh, sisters and brothers in community leadership. Do not rely on past accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Keep on accomplishments. Keep on going to, of course, get more accomplishments in future. Thank you. To a wonderful panelist planning from Malawi to Ethiopia to French Cameroon and you know to the room and all the delegates in here. Can we give the the panelists a round of applause? And each of the participants have one of our bags of hopes by Ms. Tehira. And this bags of hope, every bag that she sells, she every two bags she sells, she makes another bag to give to homeless people. So which is why as a summit we decided to support her and fellow women support another woman. Thank you.